Let's talk about computer. What is a computer and how it works? So maybe let's start from uh, somewhere else. Usually we can say that their world is full of different computers, but even if you don't have a computer, still we can say that there are machines which uh, kind of uh, work in a way that we have some input and we have some output. Or even we can think of, uh, I don't know, function or whatever. So there is something you put in and you want to get something out. Uh, in certain cases, it can be that the input is nothing and you get something out. And also you can put something in, but you don't get something out. For example, if you, I don't know, lend money or give money to someone and you don't get something out of it or vice versa, you uh, win the lottery, but then you still bought a lottery ticket and so on. But, but still, I mean, usually we can generalize that uh, often different procedures work so that we have some input and we get something out of it. Uh, there can be several inputs, there can be several outputs, but in general, the idea is that you put something in, then something happens. It might, might take a second, it might take minutes, it can be take, it, the process can take years maybe and you get something out. So uh, in computer, the idea is basically the same. The computer itself is, uh, we, we can see it as a way to kind of um, give some input, for example, write something in keyboard or press some buttons with mouse or, or something like that, or even touch screen is input. And we get something out. Output can be on the screen, in printer, something into the web, so on. So there are different ways. But basically we can say that, yeah, we give some input to a computer and it does something or gives some output. And um, uh, in more, more general, usually it's not so simple. Usually we do have a computer, but inside computer there are actually smaller programs which also have input output and this one input can be uh, taken from the previous output and so on. So it can be something like that and it can go around and it can change and, and so on. But in general, yeah, we can say that every problem or every program or every um, yeah, mechanical unit it is, um, is divided into smaller problems or tasks. And all those tasks work something like that. So we have input and we have some output and they can interact with each other. So, um, and also what we can uh, uh, compare here is, uh, for example, car. If you take a car, uh, some people know how to drive a car, but uh, to do that, you often don't think about how actually, I don't know, gear shift works or how the brakes work and, and steering works and so on. So you basically just use those uh, uh, kind of pre-defined or, or uh, kind of some, some people have made uh, you those uh, tools and you can use those tools to kind of um, uh, drive the car. So we can say that this is uh, basically the same with computers. So you can probably, there are a lot of users who know how to use computer, but actually they don't know or they, there's actually maybe no reason to know how things uh, work inside the computer. But you, probably as a programmer or IT, uh, IT uh, person, you, you probably would like to know uh, what happens inside, how, they, how the pro processes work and, and so on. So inside the computer, there is a, there is a special uh, unit, CPU. Uh, and CPU is uh, basically some, this is like the processor, and this is one, I, we can say it's like a brain inside computer. What it does, it basically takes, usually we can say it takes a, a kind of simple or small uh, calculation and executes this uh, calculation. But what it does, it, it does it very quickly and very often. So during uh, one second, it can be millions or even, even uh, more executions. So different calculations, different, uh, I don't know, 
put some symbol here, take something from uh, web, from the file, read, process something. So actually all those go through uh, CPU. And what happens is that, of course, currently we have uh, uh, several CPUs in one computer and even mobile phones have several CPUs and so on. But the idea is basically the same that uh, the CPU takes one small portion or one, we can say maybe statement or some small problem, executes it quickly and then, they, then takes another or the second one. Usually if we take a, I don't know, a program code, it starts from the beginning and goes on. So first we take first line, it's executed, then the second line, it is executed. But uh, during the same time, you can say that um, you have uh, different um, other applications running in your computer, usually operating system, then there is, uh, I don't know, Excel, Word, a browser is usually opened and so on, so gaming and so on. So all those are actually uh, simultaneously working. For, for a user it seems so, but it actually can happen that they, for example, one millisecond or 0 0.1 millisecond is, is dedicated for Excel and then 0 0.1 millisecond is dedicated to uh, gaming or browser and it seems that they are working um, simultaneously and in parallel. Of course, if you, have, if you really have several CPUs, they can work in parallel and so on, but the main idea is that, that yeah, you, you take some uh, small kind of statements or small portions of some execution and those are executed inside the CPU. Uh, we won't go so much into detail what and how CPU works, but yeah, mainly to kind of carry on the next point I want to make, we just should know that there is a CPU and uh, how the prog pro uh, program code is executed in CPU or, or machine code and that's so let's see uh, how we continue here. Uh, also I had this example about driving a car uh, and now as a programmer it is uh, nice for you to know how actually computer works or at least a bit more than maybe regular Facebook user or something like that. So, so it would be nice uh, if you want to run some code to actually know what goes on inside the computer and how things work. And um, uh, let's see how we get there uh, when we have some kind of statements, how we actually can run them inside your computer and wh what happens uh, then. So I've drawn uh, one kind of uh, schema or diagram to kind of give you an overview of how we uh, execute certain uh, programs in our uh, computer. So source code. So there's something you write. So it's basically a file. For example, you write some code, put it into a file, and then you send it to compiler. Uh, I have to say that Python is not compiled language usually, so this does not apply for Python, but for example, C is something like that. So you write your code, you send it to a computer, and then you get out a machine code. So let's say the machine code is something where you have zeros and ones. And for example, in uh, one way we can think of it is uh, in Windows you can have like executable uh, file, something like my program uh, or something like that. Or in Linux and, and um, uh, Mac you also have some executables which you can then execute. Now the compilation is done once. You write your code, you compile it and now it's in machine code and now you can execute it several times. And during the program execution what happens is that some input can be read from the user and some output can be generated. And then that's what happens with um, compiled, langu compiled languages. So the, uh, the source code of course can be several uh, files, the machine code can also be several different fi files. The program execution of course can also generate files for example, write something into a text file or something like that. So there is no limitations here, but yeah, the idea is so that we take all the uh, code, we compile it and we get machine code. Now, if there is uh, certain errors in your code, uh, the compiler 
gives you an error and you won't get the machine code. Uh, depending on the language and so on, uh, different type of errors can be uh, found out by the compiler. So, and what it, what it means is that you find out about certain errors before you execute the code. So let's compare it uh, how, for example, Python works. So uh, this is what happens in Python or with, with Python language. We again have source code here. This is a file, text file, where you have your code statements. You can be several line, several files and so on. Now, uh, you can see there is no compiler here. What happens is that the uh, source code is taken line by line and every line is interpreted and executed basically simultaneously or not simultaneously but but right after interpreting the same code is executed uh, what happens what, what it means it means that for example if i have 10 lines of code and i have an error on my fifth line depending on the error of course if this is a syntax error the interpreter gives you an error right away but if it's, if it's something, I don't know, division by zero or something like that, you can carry on the first five lines of code. You can run your code. And if you get to the sixth line or, or where the error occurs, then the error is shown or given to the user or just the program execution is terminated. So in comparison with the compiler, there is a less uh, kind of... Uh, uh, this is less strict in a way. So you can have some problems in the end of your code, but you can still uh, continue working until this error occurs. Uh, this might be might seem nice in the beginning. So if you start with uh, Python and go on into Java, Java or something like that, where you have a compiler, it can be very um, uh, very hard to kind of come over with, from this part where you were able to execute your code even though you knew that there is something wrong in your code. So in a, in a way it can seem as a good thing that you there is the, all the errors are not checked in, in the beginning that you, you can execute your code. But actually if you get used to this compiler um, way of uh, working then you understand that you will have less uh, problems or less errors in your code with this approach. But it's very easy to start with uh, Python and, and uh, that way. There are, of course, ways to compile uh, Python code also. Then something like that applies. Now, another thing we want to uh, see in comparison here is that the compiler part or the comp compilation part is uh, done only once. And I have my machine code and now everything is ex executed from this machine code. Now, every time I execute my source code here, every time the compiler or the interpreter has to interpret those statements and then execute those uh, statements or the machine code. So basically, we can say that every line is turned into a machine code and then the machine code is executed. So, for example, if my compiler, I don't know, takes maybe, uh, let's say, 10 seconds, which is okay, 10 seconds here, is that um, now, and the program execution maybe works only one second. So if I try to run it hundreds of times, I compile it once, and then I get technically 10 plus 100 seconds of uh, execution time. Here, let's say the interpreting or the compiling and the execution takes the same. So here, every execution takes 10 plus one seconds so 11 seconds. And if I run it hundreds of times, then it's a bit more execution time in general. So yeah, we can say that this compiler or compiled languages often work uh, faster. So this is, this is why we say that C and Java work faster than Python. But still, there are different kind of ways to make this one also work quicker. And one way would be to compile your code beforehand and then execute it. But this is not uh, uh, the topic in, in this course. So basically here we just go on with the part where you uh, interpret your source code and get uh, the result. 
Another thing I would like to point out is that for compilers, uh, the problem is that you usually compile the code for certain operating system and even for certain architecture of your CPU. So for example, if you have a Windows and your friend has a Mac computer, if you compile your program here in your Windows uh, machine, you cannot send it to your uh, friend. So in order for your friend to be able to execute your code, you have to send uh, the source code to your friend. Now, the problem is that now your friend also has to have the compiler. And usually it's certain program he or she has to download and so on. So it, it's not very convenient uh, to uh, write a program which is executable in different operating systems or even in, uh, for different uh, CPUs uh, with different architecture. Uh, with Python, it's easier in a way that uh, um, you don't have this uh, compiled file or, or executable file anyway. You also only have the source code. Now, you, if you send it to your friend, the friend you often ask this interpreter and he or she can run your code. Usually the interpreter is uh, lighter or it takes less um, res resources than the compiler does. But still, we can say that he or she still has to have Python in, in, in the computer in order to execute your code. But usually Python is available in, in a lot of different devices and um, every computer as every operating system does have Python also. Raspberry Pi, for example, has Python and so on. So we can say that often Python, at least, is a more portable language than, for example, C or Java. Of course, Java also works in different uh, uh, devices and so on. But, but still, uh, we can kind of say that uh, running Python in different devices is often easier. You don't need as much resources, as much different compilers and so on. Everyone usually has interpreter. So, yeah, the main idea is that we interpret our code. We take every line from the source code, we interpret it uh, for basically translate it into machine language, and then we execute this line and so on. So everything is sent to CPU, CPU operates that. Of course, every statement here, which is one line, can be hundreds of uh, CPU uh, statements, because um, of, especially Python is, we, we would say, higher order of language where we uh, write less and a lot of uh, actual work is done by us co in comparison, for example, with C language where you have to operate with memory and so on. There are pointers where you can actually point into memory in certain uh, positions and so on. So you don't have to think about that in Python. You just write your language and Python does everything for you. Which in often cases you can say that um, you can uh, write uh, more optimal code in C if you know how to do it. And if you really know that you don't care about certain things. In Python everything is taken care but it can be slower because it's not optimized for your case. But yeah, in Python, we interpret our code, source code. During the interpreting, we take input from the user if it's necessary. And during the execution, we also give output. But this can happen during the uh, execution of the source code several times. So for example, we can ask several times input, we can print something out several times. So it's not somehow uh, limited here. 